folks, up next, we got a remarkable story of hope and perseverance in the most difficult of circumstances. You don't want to miss it, folks. We'll be right back. Coming up next, she went from being behind bars to running a successful business. And I just decided one day to clean up my act and say, you know what? Going to jail is not fun. You won't believe how she's turning prisoners into entrepreneurs. How do you think Clarence is doing so far? Did you not just see? <laughs> He's doing great. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Listen, my next guest is a former inmate turned successful businesswoman who's on the verge of becoming a millionaire. Now, her remarkable story is proof that people can overcome bad choices and turn their lives around. Sometimes all they need is a second chance. Take a look. Hi, my name's Sherry, and I've had a pretty troubled past. I've spent a couple of years running around Dallas doing some things I'm not very proud of. My senior year of high school, you could find me in a cheerleading uniform selling meth. I've been arrested and put in jail 11 times. And then I finally realized this is not the life for me. This is not the direction I want to be headed. And this is not my purpose. So I made a vow to turn my life around. It was not an easy road. But since that time, I've become a successful inventor and entrepreneur. I've been very fortunate, but not everybody is that lucky. I knew I wanted to give back and help others turn their lives around. So I started volunteering at the Prison Entrepreneurship Program that gives prisoners the opportunity to change their lives. Please do not quit. It will be the biggest mistake that you've ever made in your life, even more than the mistake you've made to get in here. No longer do I have to feel insignificant. Now, I'm in the light. <laughs> 100% of our guys have a job within 90 days of being released from prison. It's truly an amazing experience to get to work with these men the way I get to, because I know what they're going through. They need somebody that believes in them and that is backing them up to show them that change is possible. You better stick with this. Sherry is very helpful. You know, she inspires me. If things get hard, please think about my speech. I have so many letters. I'll open the mailbox sometimes and there's 25 different letters from different inmates saying, thank you, you're changing my life. Because of you, I'm not gonna be on drugs or do anything bad anymore. So that that's why I'm just like, I can't mess up and I gotta keep being successful for these guys. I got a second chance, and helping these men get their second chance has been the most rewarding thing I've ever done in my life. Please welcome Sherry. Okay, you became a drug dealer at 16. What happened? I grew up in a really nice home, went to church, Dad was part of the youth ministry group, and they went through a nasty divorce. My life took an unexpected turn. I got addicted to meth, and I started selling meth so I could keep up my habit. I was running around in my cheerleading uniform, literally selling meth, and it was a really nice And I just decided one day to clean up my act and say, you know what? Going to jail is not fun. How did you survive once you decided to clean up your act? I always wanted to be a journalist, so I decided, well, I'm going to be a journalist. However, I hardly even got out of high school, but I did, and I did not go to college. So I called the news station every day for four years trying to get a job. They're like, you don't have a degree, you don't have experience, not happening. But I finally had to get creative, just like you have to when you're hustling on the streets. Mm -hmm. And I sent a pizza box with my resume face down, you know media people love food. So my resume face down, and it said, if you hire me, I will deliver. Got two jobs in one day, two different markets, one hour apart. Yeah. Worked seven days a week for two years. Okay, eventually you open your own business. Yes. Around 22, I decided to invent my first product. It's called the Luminous Envy, which is an inflatable tanning bed. You can use all months of the year on your pool, and it basically keeps you warm. So. I invented that. It was very hard, a very tough road. It took a lot of persistence. And since doing that, I started helping other people. What made you want to help other people who you thought needed a second chance? Well, um, as strange as it sounds, being a drug dealer actually makes you a really good entrepreneur because you have to hustle. You have to watch your back. You have to watch out for who you're talking to. You have to know who to trust and who not to trust. Or you're going to end up with a gun up against your dome. So you have to be careful. That's uh, street talk, folks. <laughs> Gun, dome, dome 
Beverly Street for head. <laughs> Now, how does this program work that we saw in the tape? So the Prison Entrepreneurship Program is a nonprofit that turns inmates into successful entrepreneurs. In Texas, we have the largest prison population in the United States. So we send out about 5,000 different invitations to over 60 prisons. And out of 5,000 inmates, we only bring in about 200. Once they get into the program, it's like a four-year degree smashed up into six months. So it's a lot of hard work. And then at the end, they even get a certificate of entrepreneurship from the University of Baylor. And most of these guys get to wear a cap and gown for the first time in their life. And it's the most amazing wow. thing. What's the most rewarding thing for you about this mentoring to these men? So the most rewarding thing for me is to see transformation. And I've been going through my own transformation. I still do every day. It's still not easy. I'm still young and trying to get over my past and move forward. So seeing these guys change their lives and do amazing things is like, wow, I was a part of that. Transformation is the most beautiful thing in the world. Yeah. I really do respect what you're doing, and that's why you're sitting here. You know, you made a statement a second ago. You said being a drug dealer actually made you a, a better business person. But I want to share something with you. People who deal drugs, become dealers, or get into any other form of crime and have a level of success at it, it's because they have a skill set within them. They've just channeled it in the wrong direction. And if what you're doing now is you're taking these men. You've given them an example of how it can be for them through your own experiences, which is amazing. You know, like, you know, failure is, failure is a wonderful teacher. Yeah. You've done an amazing job, young Thank lady. You. you really, really have. Thank you. And I, I love what you're doing with these men. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. Coming up, folks, uh, we're going to meet a former prisoner that Sherry is guiding towards success. And we've got a little surprise for him today. So don't go anywhere. You're going to really like this. Coming up next, a former inmate with big dreams of success. I know if your shoes are not shine, you're not on top of your game. Steve's got a surprise to help him land on his feet. One of my secrets to success is dressing the part. I want you to see your best life. All right, I'm back, everybody. I'm back with Sherry. She's a former drug dealer and an inmate who turned her life completely around and became a successful businesswoman. Now, ever since she's been paying it forward, mentoring prisoners, committed to changing their lives and giving them a second chance. One of her protégés was recently released, and she's leading him down the road to success. I want you to meet Clarence. Take a look. My name is Clarence, and I shine shoes in Fort Worth, Texas. In my youth, I became involved in drugs, and in my early 20s, I turned to a life of crime. I made a lot of bad choices, and I certainly take full responsibility for them. I've been in prison twice, and I spent a total of nine and a half years of my life behind bars. Nine and a half hard years. Prison is a very terrible place to be. It's harder than you can ever imagine. I know I had to turn my life around. I felt like I just didn't know how. Once you're in the cycle of crime in prison, it seems like there's no way out. Then I got a packet in the mail about the Prison Entrepreneurship Program, and through that, I met Sherry. When I met Clarence, he was a little hardened by prison life, but I saw that he had a desire to change his life and I believed in him. Well, Sherry is a very, very good lady. She's very energetic, she's very giving, and most importantly, she wants to help people to have a second chance. Just seeing where she came from and that she's had some troubles before in her life and that she changed her life around, it gave me inspiration to know that I can do the same thing. Two days after I was released from prison, I started my own shoe shine business. And I would really like to put them in touch with you and see if they would like to have your stand in there. She helps me with business contacts, any questions I may have, she answers. She helps me with my website. She even got me on the local news. Sherry and the Prison Entrepreneurship Program have really given me a second chance. Clarence is more than somebody that I just mentor. I consider him a part of my family. Without Sherry's guidance and belief in me, I don't know if I could have done this for real. Well, please welcome Clarence. Clarence, welcome to the show. Thank you, Steve. Absolutely. Well, let me ask you this question. How does it feel to be out of prison? Man, it feels absolutely amazing. <laughs> when I was released from prison, I made a conscious decision to never, ever go back to prison. 
Uh, the day that I got locked up, man, my grandmother died on me. She was very significant in my life. And, uh, you know, I just promised her that I would do something to change my life and be a productive man and give back and just, you know, help others like Sherry is helping. So, how have you been trying to turn your life around? Two days after I was released from prison, uh, I started my shoe shine business. More importantly, while I was in prison, I was very uh, determined to start my business. So I saved three thousand dollars of my own money in prison, and most importantly, uh, I went to a barber shop and different other places to try to get my business off the ground and get located somewhere properly. So you got a stand in a barber shop? Yeah, I got a stand in a barber shop downtown Fort Worth called Sheldon's Barber Shop. Mm -hmm. But my goal was to have uh, 50 stands working for me in five years. But I want to be in high-rise office buildings and real five-star hotel chains where people can see me shining shoes. So that when they see me shining shoes, I do such a fabulous job. You'll want to get in that chair. <laughs> Where did you develop the skill set of shining shoes? Uh, I mean, I've always liked to look sharp and dress very nice. Mm -hmm. And I know if your shoes are not shine, you're not on top of your game. But most importantly, when I went to prison, I refused to work in them fields. So I talked to that boy, and I said, Warren, look out, man. Give me a chance to shine your shoes one time. If I don't give you an awesome shine, don't give me the job. So the warden, through your persistence, allowed you to shine his shoe. Yes, sir, he did. And everybody else in the prison was in line trying to get a shoe shine from the Shine King. Wow. Do you only shine shoes? No, sir, Steve. I'd like to give you a small picture to give you an idea exactly what I do. As we all know, sir, one of the very first things we notice on a person is their shoes. Now, it's my job, buddy, to make that first impression truly stand out. Because as we all know, Mr. Harvey, you never get a second chance to make that very first impression. And with my shoe shine, sir, you would not just blend in, but you would shine and stand out. Now, picture being on your way to work, church, or even especially on a party, and you have to notice your shoes are scuffed up and very unattractive compared to that beautiful outfit you're wearing. Well, that's why I come in as a very proud founder and owner of the Shine King. My name is Clarence, and I bring to you 12 professional years of shoe and boot shining and all-around leather care experience. But my competitive advantages are I specialize in all exotic skins, alligator, crocodile, ostrich, lizard, <laughs> snake, and even anteater. Yeah. We also shine ladies' purses, belts, wallets, briefcases, and horse saddles. If it's leather, Steve, bring it to the Shine King, and I guarantee you, sir, I'll make it look better than brand spanking new. You know, when I heard all this, I said, okay, I gave Clarence a pair of my shoes. That's from the Shine King, folks. <laughs> That's the real deal, folks. That's a pretty good job there, Clarence. I ain't gonna lie to you, man, because... I really appreciate this. I will not put my shoes on if they're not shine. Because I was just, I was raised that way, and that was, that's just really... Let me ask you this question about this young lady right here. What does Sherry mean to you? Sherry is a very, very inspiration to my life. She does so much for me as a mentor. She helps me in any way I can call her, any time, day or night, and she's there for me. And I'm very, very blessed to have her in my life as a mentor and as a friend. Wow. Thank you. Well, Sherry, let me ask you, how do you think Clarence is doing so far? Did you not just see? <laughs> he's doing great. And if he keeps going on the path that he's on right now, He's going to be so successful, it's going to blow everyone away. I got it. Okay. Good over here. My, uh, the EP on my show, Alex Duda, is very superstitious. So she just wrote on the cue card, shoes on the table is bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> What's the key ingredient, uh, Sherry, for an entrepreneur to succeed? Networking. You have to network. And just don't give up. Even when you have those hurdles, because every day I still have some pretty big hurdles. But I'm like, these hurdles are not yeah. anything near as happy as the success that I can have. Absolutely. You know, I, I, like I was telling Cheryl, I love the fact that she gives back. I love the fact that while you were locked up, that you had a plan. Because if you fail to plan, then you might as well plan to fail. It's very simple. And then you're giving back. I love this idea that, that I heard about, you know, you wanted to give back. You wanted to create an opportunity for guys who come out of prison. Exactly. I want to give those gentlemen a chance to own their own business. And I also want to give back to your program in Dallas, the mentoring program, if you'll let me, man. 
Well, what I'm going to do is just for all this day, I want you to come out, you know, and just show the boys the importance of having a shine shoe. Okay. And now I got a surprise for you. Okay. How about this right here? One of my secrets to success is dressing the part. That's why my personal designer and tailor, Dietrich, from Hadiaki, uh, bespoke. He's going to be giving you a couple of custom tailored suits. I want you to see what that's like. I'm going to send you down here. And my very own stylist, the guy that styles me for my show and everything, named Will Phoenix, mm -hmm. he's going to guide you through the whole process, pick out the right colors and everything. And then I want to touch base with you in Dallas. I want you to come out and talk to the importance of keeping the shine shoe with my young mentors. And then uh, we'll, we'll stay in touch. Man. I think you're a fabulous story, Sherry. I think you are the absolute angel that a lot of guys need. Thank you so much. Hey, listen, good luck to both of you. We'll be right back, folks.